Hi everybody. So today's lecture is on reviewing the rules of graphing, particularly graphing in science, which is very, very important. For example, let's say we collected some data. This is some data showing how far maybe somebody walked every second. As you can see here, we measured a distance in meters every second. Now when making a graph, there are certain rules that you have to apply. First thing you're going to do is to draw an axis. Now, what do I mean by drawing an axis? Well, an axis is a set of lines that are going to cross each other. I could draw an axis like this, but that might not be useful in terms of the data that I'm collecting. Since all of the data is positive, I don't need any negative regions on my axis. So that can often decide how the axis is going to even begin. Okay, I want to look at my data and see are there positive and negative numbers, and that will sort of help me draw my axis. So in this case, as you've seen, I've just drawn kind of an L-looking axis so that all my data is in the positive area. Next, I want to label each axis with symbols and units. Now, a lot of that should already be decided in your data chart. Okay, you can see I have time that is in seconds and distance represented with an X in meters. So those are similar labels I'm going to want on my graph. However, I have to make sure I put the dependent measurement on the Y-axis and the independent measurement on the X-axis. Now, what does that even mean, dependent measurement and independent measurement? Well, you can think of it this. Independent measurement is the one you're controlling. In other words, you're deciding, I'm going to take a measurement every one of these. And the dependent measurement is what you then measure based on what you've decided to control. So for example, here, I decided to measure distance every second. That means that the distance is the dependent measurement because I measure distance depending on seconds, which is what I'm going to control. That's pretty typical in physics, especially. Time is often a very useful independent measurement because it's an easy thing to control. But there are situations where it might be reversed and time is the dependent measurement. For example, if you look at this data that was collected on Usain Bolt's world record running, you'll notice that they show the time every 10 meters. So clearly, 10, every 10 meters is what we're controlling here. So in this case, distance would actually be the independent measurement and time would be the dependent measurement because the time was collected based on the distance. And that's sort of the difference. So that's how you kind of decide which is going to be which. So in the case of the data that I collected here, distance is the dependent measurement. So it is labeled up there on the y-axis. Now I know that might seem strange to see an x on the y-axis because of what your math teachers often show you, but anything can be up on that axis. It depends on what you're doing. Time, which is the independent measurement, will be labeled down here on the x-axis. Okay, very important to start off with. Next, you need to title your graph. Your graphs must have a title. Otherwise, the people reading the graph won't know what the graph is about. And remember, this is important. You're not making the graph for you. You're making it for someone else to read. So a title must describe what you are exactly measuring. Now, when I go to title a graph, I typically put the title at the top. And I always want to title a graph whatever is on the y-axis versus whatever is on the x-axis. So in this case, I want to label it distance versus time because that's what I'm measuring. Now notice I have distance and in parentheses x so that the reader knows that x is the symbol for distance on my graph. Time, parentheses t. So again, the reader knows that time is what the symbol is on the x-axis. Very important, always label your graph title, the y-axis versus the x-axis. Next, I want to set up what is called equal intervals along the axis. But what's going to be important is whatever intervals I set up on one axis, I don't have to have the same intervals on the other axis. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, intervals are kind of my little dashes so I can know where I'm going to label my points. So I want to look at my data and think of what logical intervals are going to be. Now, clearly along time, one second intervals are going to be important. However, what I don't want to do is to do something like this because then that makes the graph extremely hard to read. Explore the space of your graph paper. Now, for example, if I decide to make one second at this point, which is four boxes, then two seconds, 
has to be at the next four boxes. You must make sure that you're doing equal spacing for each interval. You can't just randomly choose. That's not allowed. On the y-axis where I'm measuring distance, I could again go by one seconds or I could go by two seconds because I'm looking at the data and two also works here. Now, because I went four boxes there doesn't mean I have to go four boxes here. Also, I went by three boxes there. It doesn't really matter. You don't, you're not confined to that. Okay, so that's what I mean by setting up equal intervals along each axis. Next, of course, you need to plot your points. Very important in graphing. So plotting my points on the graph here, my first is 0, 0. If that's a legitimate point, don't ignore it. Okay, always make sure you plot that point. Now next, I'm going over to time 1 and distance 2. I'm going over to time 2 and distance 4 over to time 3 and distance 6, and then finally time 4 and distance 8. I've plotted my points. Finally, I want to draw the best fit line or curve. Now what that means is either a line or curve, depending on the look of the graph, that sort of best encompasses or best shows all my points. First of all, you have to decide if a line or a curve is appropriate. Now in this case, the rate at which we go up on the x-axis and go up on the y-axis is very similar to each other. Okay, so and clearly a line is appropriate here. And in this case the line that best fits is one that goes through all the points. Okay, now we don't extend the line beyond our data here. Again, this is not like math where you show a line continuing forever. We just show what is actually on the graph. And that's the simple rules to draw a graph. So let's look at a different example. So again, here I've collected some distance traveled over some time. Now the numbers here look really different, but the rules I'm going to apply are still the same. First, I'm going to draw my axes. Again, everything's all a positive number, so that's going to start there. I want to label distance in meters on the y-axis. That is my dependent measurement and again time and seconds on the x-axis, my independent measurement. Okay, intervals. Well, again, looking at the time one, going by two seconds seems like an appropriate interval to use here. On the y-axis, I'm going from 0 to 64. That's quite a variety of numbers. So I'm going to have to play around maybe a little bit with what my intervals are going to be here. But I'm going to go, for example, every two boxes. And then for the numbers to choose here, because of the size of my graph, I'm going to go by eights, which means every one box is a four. Okay, that maybe will help me with what I'm going to do here. Of course, I need an appropriate title for my graph. Of course, we want to title it the y-axis versus the x, distance x versus time t, so the reader knows what those symbols mean. Now I'm ready to plot my points. 0, 0 is my first point. Over 2 and up 4. Now remember, since every 2 boxes up is 8, every 1 box is 4. So that's right there. Over 4 and up 16. Over 6 and up 36. So that's going to be right here. And over 8 and up 64. Now it's time to draw my best fit line or curve. Now in this case, a line is not appropriate. If I were to attempt to draw a line, even a best fit one, it would end up looking something like this. And that doesn't come close to a lot of the points. This is a curve, and it's a curve because the numbers on the y-axis are increasing at a gr much greater rate than the numbers on the x-axis. Okay? And that's sometimes how you can identify a curve. So for here, I want to draw a kind of upward going curve. And so again, that's going to be one of the trickiest part of graphing, identifying whether it's a line or a curve. Okay, let's look at one final example. Now here, I've got a bunch of numbers and they seem a little more random what they're looking like. So let's set up our first parts of graphing.
okay, I have my axes, I've got my labels, I've got my intervals set up, I've got my title, so I'm already to the point where I'm ready to plot the points. So, first one, zero, zero. Second one is over two and up to three, over four and up to four, over six and up to seven, and over eight and up to 10. Now, again, trying to decide, well, line or curve. Well, the numbers on each axis go up by similar amounts, so a curve is not appropriate here. But I also can't play connect the dots. So in this case, I'm gonna draw what's called a best fit line. And a best fit line is kind of a line that sort of averages the data if you wanna look at it this way. Now, you notice the way I drew this is I didn't hit any data points, and that's fine with a best fit line. Okay, it's sort of like you're averaging those points out a little bit, and that's actually good enough. And often that's what we'll have to end up drawing. So that's what it means by drawing a best fit line when the data sort of isn't perfect. Now, what's gonna be even better, of course, is if you learn how to graph on a computer, because computer-based graphs are always better than hand-drawn graphs, but if you have to hand-draw a graph, these are the steps to do it. All right, see you next time.